Hi, I'm Bill O'Farrell. I'm from Body Labs. I'm the CEO, one of the co-founders. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. And, and thanks to our host. It's a great forum. And we're really delighted to be here. Um, I'm also really glad we made it, because I didn't realize the penalty for not making it was exile. Uh, uh, Ted, Ted mentioned that he had a lot of knowledge in his head. And um, I have the opposite problem. I don't have much. So I'm going to try to talk really fast and hope you don't notice. Um, I want to talk to you about bodies. Uh, I want to talk to you about bodies as the next digital platform. Um, yeah, got it. OK, so let me just sort of give some context. Let me talk about some things that I think we're all aware of. Um, the first is the world around us is becoming ever more personalized. It's becoming more precise, becoming more connected. And we all know that there are all kinds of enabling technologies. There's uh, 3D printers, there's computer-aided design, there's robotics. All of this stuff is moving us increasingly toward the reality of a mass customized world. And, and this is sort of what we see, and, and you know, we're obviously not the only ones to share this vision. We see a world in which pretty much everything you buy, everything you interact with, is in some way, shape, or form personalized specifically to you. And if you think about it, that's a big deal because almost everything that was ever made by human hands interacts in some way, shape, or form with the body. And yet, from time immemorial, we have always used proxies to represent the body. It's been measurements, mannequins, it's been weight. Um, and obviously, in an automated and highly efficient world, these are slow, these are inefficient, and they're prone to human error. Even as we improve these things, it doesn't really capture what really matters. So a digital scale is great, but it doesn't really show anything about the geometry of the body. It certainly doesn't tell you anything useful like, what size clothing should I buy? And here's a good example. These two women, based on their measurements and their weight, are a size four. And yet, almost every single garment you could put on them, aside from a moo moo, would look quite different. So we think this is a problem. We think this is a problem for people designing products, for people manufacturing products, for people acquiring and, 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 and selling and buying products. And so that's what we try to do. We try to figure out how do you solve this problem? How do you make the body itself the platform around which goods and services can be designed, can be manufactured, can be bought, sold? We want to make this a platform. So we set out to do this. I, I, and this is, this is not meant to be a product pitch, because this was all done in, in university. This is a research project done at Brown University and the Max Planck Institute. But it was a really cool project. It was how do you get a comprehensive model of the human body? It needs to be fast. It needs to be inexpensive. It needs to be fully automatic. It needs to be highly accurate. It needs to be able to compare. You need to be able to compare bodies in some principled and consistent way. And it turns out, we thought it was easy, but it's really hard. It's really hard because A, body shape varies tremendously. right? Um, and bodies are in motion. They move all the time. And if you can't get a good model of the way a body deforms, you really don't capture all the information you need. And if you're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, if you're going to create this model, this statistical understanding, this data-based understanding of the body, you need to start with good data. So getting good data is really hard. Hand measurements are imprecise. They're inconsistent. They vary from person to person. And even these high-end scanners that people used to use have problems. They have holes in them. Uh, the measurements that come out of these scanners are at best inconsistent and frequently just wrong. So how are you going to build this model? Well, they did. So, Eight years later, and I'll get to the how and the why, uh, here we are, is uh, we have a comprehensive ability to recreate any body, any shape, move it through a full range of human poses with complete fidelity to the way a human really looks and moves in real life. And how we did that, how they did that, was first they started with the data. Thousands and thousands and thousands of scans from thousands and thousands of different bodies in thousands and thousands of different shapes. Measurements really well documented, really well correlated. And they took the data. They created a model first of the human body shape. 
the next human body pose, and then they combine them. So now you can move any body through any range of motion and put them in any pose. And here's sort of the kind of the secret sauce here. This, and I won't go too deep into this. I'll try to give the cliff notes, the spark notes on this. What enabled the researchers to sort of make this model is they previously this was all done by hand. All of the modeling was really done by hand. So how are you going to make this big comprehensive database uh, useful? And how are you going to correlate it? How are you going to how are you going to create this model? But this thing called co-registration, where they started with kind of a not so great model of the body and a little bit of data. They fed the data into the model. They made the model a little better, and they fed a little more data in. Made the model a little better, and then they went back to the data. They got a little bit better understanding of the data, and they iterated and iterated and iterated until they got this. Whoops. And now we can take, and we've, we've licensed this technology, so this is all stuff we didn't do. But now it's possible to take a scan, and this is a, literally a million dollar scanner up here. I'll talk how that gets cheaper. Um, and recreate it either from scans or measurements into a, a useful body model that the computer can understand and around which products can be designed. And then sort of the last geeky point I'll make is the other important component of what, what, what's, what's enabled here is this body comparison. It's a, we, we call it point-to-point -point correspondence. So if you think about it, you can, you can sort of align a whole bunch of bodies at the tip of a nose. That's a sort of pretty easy thing for uh, computer vision to understand. But if you're trying to align a body, um, the points of a body at sort of the gut level, you know, how does that match up to the other, the, this exact same point on everyone else's gut? <clears throat> Excuse me. How do you keep track of the point as it moves across a range of motion as the shoulder moves? So this ability to sort of keep all these bodies in point-to-point -point correspondence has enabled one really important thing, and that's the ability to do comparisons of the body, really tight comparisons of the body. And now with this, we can do all kinds of interesting applications. All kinds of applications are enabled, I think is a better way to say that. We can compare my body to a football player. We can take 12 NFL running backs. We can compare each of them. We can combine them. We can average them. We can now put a prototypical NFL running back. And from a prototypical NFL running back, you can actually create a whole product line that actually is going to fit that particular kind of freak of nature athlete. So we think that's cool. Um, and I think for us, at least for me, you know, if you're going to start a company, there really should be two first principles. The first is it should be cool. The second, unfortunately, because we have to deal with Matt, is uh, you've got to figure out how you're going to make some money, right? <laughs> uh, so there are a bunch of applications I'll run through quickly. I do not want to make this a product pitch. Um, but one of the key things is we're now able to take actually really inexpensive uh, hardware and make it pretty interesting and useful. This is a Kinect. It's a $200 piece of hardware from Microsoft. It, it, it's an interesting piece of hardware, but as far as scanning goes, it's hardly the best in the world. It has actually not very good data coming out of it. We can take that data, we can align it with our statistical model, and all of a sudden you get a highly accurate model from a $200 piece of hardware. That's a really interesting enabling technology. Um, we can do custom clothing. We can do sort of the spec in motion, so we can measure things in motion for clothing design, sizing and grading, automatic pattern generation, size recommendations. Uh, we can tell you just exactly how close you are to the size four fit model for J. Crew. We do all kinds of analytics, face, <coughs> excuse me, face modeling, a lot of 3D and wearable applications. Um, sorry, she's not moving. You saw her boxing before. Um, but we can take motion capture now and affix that to any body. So we can take any motion capture and literally affix it to any body. So that's great for animation. It's great for video gaming. We do a lot of body tracking. How's the body change over time when it comes to uh, fitness regimes? And this is really sort of what we think is, we see the body as sort of the center of, of the universe. It's around with which a constellation of applications can be built. So. That's where we are. What have we learned so far? Well, we learned what we already knew, which are bodies are hard. So we've got this application. We've got the ability. We've got it out of research, out of university. It's working really well. But there's a lot more to do. We want to have better data, better coverage. We want to know better correlations. 
Um, we want to do better models of hands, feet, heads. Uh, we focused a lot on the apparel industry, um, which moves very slowly. It's traditional. It's painful. Um, we've got a big customer called the US Army. We've got a couple other big customers who have big R&D budget or more product development budgets, uh, sports apparel. There aren't as many of those as we'd like. Um, and this is really, I think, the key thing for us. We, we feel like it's timing. We think that we're introducing really a new capability, and we need to be really careful about the timing. So be a wizard. Arrive exactly when you mean to. So the good news, I think, is that all of this technology that we need to, uh, to, see, on, to see sort of in the hands of consumers is happening. There's uh, all kinds of, Google's got a, a, a handheld scanner out. Uh, Amazon's got its new phone. There's all kinds of big companies uh, who are in this area. The, you know, the quantified itself is becoming a giant movement. Um, and all of the technologies we talked about earlier are really starting to be adopted. So the thing that we really want to do next, and the thing we're focused on most, is enabling a thousand flowers to bloom. We make great bodies. We think great bodies need to be made. Um, but we don't know where all the good applications are, or even all the possible ones. So let's get an SDK out, which we're hoping to release very soon. And let's let the creative juices of the developers of the world sort of take root. So um, I think I talked about as fast as I possibly could. So I will just say thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, You mean the, you mean the, you mean the retail sizing application? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great application. So, or a great question, because, you know, there are a lot of different approaches to this now. So there are a lot of there are a lot of ways that people try to that companies are trying to figure out how to do better sizing, and there are things like, you know, what's your three favorite shirts and the size is one of your favorite brands. And, and there's sort of a lot of algorithmic work that can go into sort of approximating a prediction on what you'd, you'd fit into or what you might like. We see it differently. We, we think that um, pretty much all apparel is designed around fit models. And then the apparel is graded based on a mathematical formula. So what we would do if we were doing this application is we'd say, OK, well, here's the size six fit model, for example. Here are the grading rules, the mathematical formula that, that determine how all the other sizes will be made. Let's make body models automatically of all of these sizes. And then let's take the consumer who's interested, either through inputting measurements, which are traditionally not very accurate because people really can't measure themselves, or better yet, a really cheap scan off of a Tango or an iPhone or something. And let's compare at a point-to-point -point level, highly accurately, how close that consumer matches the various fit models that for which all this apparel has been designed. And then you could say, well, look, you know, we don't really know if you're going to like the J. Crew size 4 or 8 or 10. But we do know that J. Crew designed this for someone who's 98% exactly the same size as you. So J. <laughs> J. Crew thinks it's going to fit. So that's how that would work as an application. So first of all, uh, compliments to quoting German now. Um, so I think uh, it's a really wonky question, but yep. integrating something like this, I uh, imagine this is just a massive data set, right? Yeah, so it's all in the cloud. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so if we wanted to incorporate that into a device, you would basically push it to the cloud? That's a great, uh, that's a great question. So we're in the process now of trying to really enable this at a, at a, the, you know, sort of mass, sort of mass developer level. So the the processing gets done at the cloud, at the cloud level through a, an, um, a web service called BodyHub. Upload a scan, download the model. Um, how you want to integrate that into an application, you know, is really something that we're trying to expose the right hooks to. But we see sort of we see all of the body work, if you will, kind of moving through our system on the cloud because otherwise it's just too hard to, to distribute and, 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 and it's really hard to keep it up to date. Did that answer your question? Cool. Hi. Hi, uh, Gash from the company. Uh, um, there's, a job, I think there's a job company that's using uh, 3D models for catalog photography. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah. So there's 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 a lot of stuff out there um, that sort of. I mean, we've had we've gone to customers who've said, well, you know, I've seen these avatars in Disney movies. Um, you know, why is this so special? So there's a lot of stuff that gets very, um, I think, convoluted, and it really sort of depends what you're trying to do. So there's, for example, a, a, a company called, um, called, I think it's called Fitz.me, where they have actually literally a physical mannequin that they inflate and deflate and, and dress with different size shirts or dresses or things, and they take photos of it. And they, they're, you know, they have business because that's a highly realistic way of displaying how a garment will fit on a, on a different physical body. You know, I, I, I think that's got a place, but that's not what we do. So um, I don't really know if that's getting to the heart of your question, but there's a lot of folks sort of in and around the space, but I don't think they're really doing sort of this, this underlying statistical, comprehensive statistical model of the human body. Great. Thank Great. you very much. Thanks, everybody.